What would you do if you had a superpower? An extra ability not shared with the rest of the human race? Would you use it wisely? Would you be benevolent? Or would you be tempted to use it for your own gain? Interesting question, isn't it? And honestly, I can't tell you what I would do if I was faced with such a situation. And that's the dilemma faced by the protagonist in tonight's story. Another fantastic one from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could share your stories with me and I could read them more for you. Well, my dear friends, it's once again Friday and definitely time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. Let me make this clear. I'm not a monster, or a serial killer, or any kind of supernatural paranormal entity. I'm just a guy. <laughs> Seriously. Well, I'm invisible. Or maybe imperceptible is a better word for it. I've spent a long time looking for the right way to describe it. I am, for all intents and purposes, almost completely invisible, inaudible, and unable to be noticed by another living soul. It's very hard to sum it up in a single word like that. Yeah, you probably don't believe me. Maybe you'll call me crazy. Tell me to reach out, get some help. But I'm not crazy. I have no way of proving it, but I'm not just inventing all of this in my mind. I've tried anything and everything I can of to catch someone's attention or to find a way to fix this. I started off small. Just called a few people and tried to talk to them. Then I listened as each and every one of them hung up on me. They must have thought that they just couldn't hear me, or that I dialed them by accident, or even that I was just messing with them. Then I went to see them in person. My friends. My dad. People who had no reason or right to ignore me like that. Let me think that oh, I was losing my mind. And from there, it just escalated. I panicked, and in that panic, I did some stupid things. Jumped in people's faces, screamed until my throat was sore, banged pans together, <laughs> shoved and pushed people, went into total strangers' houses uninvited. <sighs> None of it worked. Nothing. Not even the slightest reaction out of people. I tried wearing a sheet, as ridiculous as that might sound in hindsight. But... Whatever I touch just seems to stop existing in people's heads too. I even punched the guy in the face. Hard enough to knock him down on his ass. Someone walking in the street. I was so angry that he wouldn't just say something to me. Acknowledge my existence. You know what he did? He just got back up and went about his day. Off down the street like a homeless man hadn't just attacked him. And yes, I am homeless now. My asshole of a landlord didn't even so much as call the police when I up and disappeared. This all makes me sound really bad. Just pure crazy. But you have to understand the state of mind I was in. All of this. Everything I just talked about was mostly in the first couple of weeks. Desperation driving me to insanity. And uh, I've calmed down now. Sort of. I guess I got used to it. For about two years, I've watched as people's eyes just glaze over the moment I walk into a room. I don't think most people would notice, even if they saw it from the outside. It's not a big change in the way everyone acts around me. Just that people turn into zombies the second I get close. They just pay a little less attention, or a little more if they're focused on something already. People not doing anything just stare off into space more or distract themselves. And they always look straight through me, like I'm a ghost. Oh, I'm not, for the record. I'm obviously still alive, if people are seeing this. It took me a while to notice, too. I mean, it's really not very obvious, even though it should have been to me. I guess I have some excuse. I used to live out in the sticks and didn't exactly talk to people on a daily basis. But I also used to pay very little attention to other people. 
You could say I outright ignored them. So I probably only have myself to blame. Maybe that's why I'm in this situation. They just return the favor in kind and stop paying attention to me. Now, you might be wondering if I'm this godlike invisible freak who, with their very presence, destroys the ability to perceive him, then how am I an urban legend? How does anyone even know I exist? It's because, by some amazing stroke of luck, there are cracks in this invisibility. I get the occasional person that jumps when they see me, out of the corner of their eye. They see me, just for that split second. And that gives me hope. But, more importantly, even though people can't see me, they can still see the aftermath of what I do. Even if it's delayed. The guy I punch feels a large bruise on his face a couple of minutes later, and writes it off as hitting himself when he tripped earlier. I take an item. Or I move it and people don't see me picking it up, but they notice it's missing some time later. And here's the important one. I can write something down, say, a note on a piece of paper, and people can read it. That's how you're reading this now. I've done my best to make my presence known in this city. I make it really obvious when I'm squatting somewhere. I leave notes everywhere I go, telling people that I'm here. I move people's stuff around in obvious ways when I need to stay somewhere that has, for example, heat and a working shower. Most people think it's a hoax, and the slew of copycats around the city don't help shake that idea. But they know I exist, even if they don't think I'm real. That's better than not existing at all. I'm the Phantom, the Invisible Man. I take pride in that. Of course, I'm not self-centered enough to just talk about myself. And while I'm perfectly happy just to tell my own story and put more proof of my existence out there, I came to a place like this. Which means I well, should have a story to tell. One that'll get under your skin and into your head. I do have some stories like that. My situation puts me in a unique position to look into some of the other urban legends in this city. Stuff that makes my situation seem tame in comparison. I'll start with the one I have the most personal experience with. This one alone can give you a feel for how much worse it gets in my city. There's not a real name for them, but a lot of people call them spooks, or just ghosts. It's the kind of thing you'd read about online because, well, it's all stuff that's too easy to write off. Bumps in the night. Shapes in the corners of your eyes. The distinct feeling that someone or something is watching you. Stuff everyone has experienced. But these are real. People who stay out too late at night in too deserted of an area disappear pretty often. I'd say four times out of ten. Most are never seen again. But occasionally, a body does turn up. Mauled, like an animal had got to it. But security footage magically never seems to show anything. Even if it's pointed directly towards where the body ended up. There are never any eyewitness accounts. Nobody even knows what they look like. But the aftermath of the situation is always painfully real and disturbing. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's hard not to believe all of that when you're living it. They're not like me, though. Well, they're invisible like me, but almost certainly by choice. I've never seen them, but I have heard them for a long time, since before I was like this. And I came dangerously close to one of them more recently. It was relatively recently, but it was still a good while ago now. If I had to be specific, maybe about six months. It was raining, so I was sleeping in an old abandoned house in one of the less populated parts of town. And that's when I heard it. Heard it smash through the window, which woke me up and put me on full alert. Heard it shuffling steps as it walked around the living room area. Heard it talk. There was no emotion to its voice, no intonation or specific volume. It was plain, not whispering, not yelling. 
Just saying, in a level tone, the word, hello, over and over. Every couple of seconds, he would repeat the word. It was faint, but as he got closer to the room I was in, I could hear it better on the other side of that door. There was a strange sort of resonance to it, like multiple people were speaking the word at the same time. No, not even that. It was like the same person was speaking the word at multiple different pitches all at once. It didn't sound like a person. It sounded like something badly pretending to be a person. Eventually, I heard it scramble out through what I guess was the window, and the sound of its voice fade off into the night. Well, I didn't sleep that night. I waited for the sun to rise and the rain to stop, and I booked it. They aren't human, or even anything that could have once been a human. They couldn't be. Nothing with the slightest understanding of humanity could be that poor of an imitator. Of course, not all of the legends in my city are that scary. Not to the average person, anyways. We have our alleged ghost hunter here. A certain Mr. Aronias. Big guy, wears a lot of brown. It's mostly common knowledge that when there's weird shit going on, you call him to fix it. Now, he's not some government agent or anything. He's kind of just a guy. But he's the real deal. How do I know? Because he's seen me. Or, more accurately, because he's attacked me. I had the uh, pleasure of meeting him when I was staying in an older woman's house. This was before I started leaving notes, and maybe the reason I do that now to begin with. I'm really not sure what tipped her off. Between the missing food, the mysterious self-activating shower, and the chair I accidentally broke. But she figured out something was up pretty quick. Yeah, I wasn't too bright. Although, I would like you to keep in mind this happened before the other incident. When the police turned up and found nothing, she of course called the one person who could maybe deal with it. He comes in, wearing his brown suit and suitcase... And of course, he sees me instantly as soon as the lady opens the door. He warns her to get out of the house immediately. I'm dumbstruck here, seeing as he's the first person to even acknowledge my existence in months. So, I try talking to him. He just opens up his case and pulls out a fire extinguisher. Before I can even get another word out, he sprays me with it and then shoves me with it hard, sending me halfway across the room. I should mention, this guy is kind of jacked. His arms look bigger than my head. And while I'm sure some of it is fat, a lot of it is muscle. That said, and I'm pretty proud of this actually, I managed to topple him over with a hard shove of my own. And of course, then is the point where something finally clicks. I guess because he yells, wait, at me. But by that point, I'm halfway down the block and almost out of the neighborhood. He didn't chase me, probably because his job was just to get me out of the house. Overall, I don't take it too personally. He saw me, but I don't think he saw me. I've seen him around a couple of times since, and he's looked at me. He hasn't tried to attack me again, but he also hasn't tried to talk to me or anything, so... I don't know for sure what he sees now. And I mostly wrote about that to lighten my mood a bit. It's nice to think that there's someone out there who can help people with all of this weirdness, even if he can't necessarily help me. But there's also people out there who just make it worse. Yes, there's a cult in my city. Now, they've never been convicted of anything strictly illegal, but they're not exactly the friendliest bunch. They call themselves the Four Seers. They sell fortunes to people. That's about the most interaction you'll ever have with them. They keep to themselves. You never see them in the city unless they're doing business. And the thing is, their fortunes are crazily accurate. They can't give you exact details, but if they say something is going to happen, then it's almost certain it will. Now, they can't tell you the winning lottery number, but if you bring them a list of people who bought a ticket, then they'll tell you who's most likely to win. 
They can tell you which of your friends have betrayed your trust recently. They can tell you how you'll die, but not when it'll happen. Obviously, they're pretty popular among the more shady parties. Politicians looking for an unfair edge on their opponents. Criminals trying not to get caught. Those kinds of people. The police don't get involved. Rumour has it they helped the police catch a serial killer a long time ago by giving them a list of potential victims. And since then, they haven't messed with the four seers. A lot of people have been going missing in this city, and rumours spread fast. The four seers charge for their fortunes after they're meant to have come true, probably to rope people in. People who don't or can't pay up tend to be one of those unfortunate souls that never makes it home. There's all kinds of rumours about dark rituals and gang involvement with them, probably not completely unfounded. I've never dealt with them personally, so I can't back any of that up. But when you hear enough bad things like that, at least some of it has to be true, right? The final thing I've got is the Texas Plains Unicorn. This is more something kids talk about in school than a legend people take seriously around here. But I think, given everything else I've talked about, it's worth mentioning at least. There's a string of strange, unexplainable deaths that go all the way back to the 1800s. People crushed and mangled overnight in the empty stretch that surrounds a city. There's never been an explanation for how or why this stuff happens. Bodies just turn up. This, in itself, is one of the town's big mysteries. One that would certainly be a tourist trap and a fun discussion for horror fanatics. If people weren't still dying this way. And because of this, people don't generally hike or camp around here. Just to be safe. The unicorn is almost more of a dark joke than anything else. But it's a supposed explanation for those deaths. The rumour is that, supposedly out in the outskirts of town... There's a horse-like monster that roams the plains. One that spends the days stalking its victims, learning their patterns and waiting until they're completely alone. And then it strikes. Its appearance is the one thing people can never settle on. One day it's a giant six-legged unicorn, and the next it's a long-necked, hairless monstrosity. That's why people don't really believe in it. But some days, I get the feeling it isn't total bullshit. Living out there for a while really makes you paranoid. It's quiet and desolate. There were nights back then when I could have sworn I saw something out of my window. I don't really remember those days all too well anymore, though. Not with the insanity of my life in more recent times. Well, that's about everything I can think of as far as urban legends go here. At least, everything that isn't, oh, there's a ghost on the second floor of the high school type stuff. Well, I don't know if I'll post again, but if I do, keep an eye out. So, uh, that was all the makings of a, a series, that one. We'll see if it goes any further. It works pretty well as a standalone episode on its own, but I don't know. Seems like it could take off and go off into many different directions. Anyway, on to my personal life. Those of you who uh, follow the channel will know that um, my life's in a huge state of upheaval right now. And I've done it. I've made the move to Holland. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> yep, I'm here. And um, everything is incredibly crazy in my life right now. So, the fact I'm uh, still being able to do stories for you is something of a victory for me. But long may it continue. I have no plans of stopping, despite the upheaval in my life, and really value the fact that you're still joining me. Well, that's enough for one week. I've got a busy week of <laughs> several weeks ahead of me. So, sweet dreams, and bye-bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?